More, Dr. Emanuele Copabianco joins me now live from Geneva. He is the Director of Programs at the WHO Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us on the program, Doctor. Just walk us through why the WHO has decided to create this treaty now and some of the details it contains to avert another health crisis in the future. Well, thank you for having the WHO Foundation with you. Uh, this is the beginning of an historic uh, process that uh, will hopefully make the world uh, uh, safer and healthier. And the WHO is convening for the next three days all member states to discuss the um, beginning of the negotiation for what will be a pandemic uh, treaty or convention that will basically try to address the gaps that have been uh, um, put very clear in the front of everyone uh, eyes uh, during the um, pandemic of COVID-19. How much damage do you think we could have prevented uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic hit if we had a treaty like this already in place? It's difficult to say, but what we want now is uh, a, a treaty that will be responding to some of the challenges. As uh, uh, Ellen Clark in the, in the video said uh, a few minutes ago, we want to have a stronger WHO, more independent, more financed, uh, that will be coordinating the, the work in, in the world. We want to make sure that we avoid the problems of equity or inequity or injustice, if you want, around vaccines that we have been experiencing uh, uh, during COVID-19, where 80% of, uh, of the vaccines have gone to, to Western countries and only 0.6% of, of 8 billion, of billion vaccines have gone to, to the low-income countries. And we want to a better system of financing uh, for uh, future response uh, to pandemics. Right, and the WHO was greatly criticized for its late response to the pandemic back in 2019. And we're kind of seeing a pattern here where um, they're being uh, criticized for calling on countries to refrain from in implementing travel bans on countries who have high cases of the Omicron variant. How would you evaluate the WHO's response and current handling of the pandemic? Well, I strongly believe the WHO has been a, a, the cornerstone of the response to COVID-19. Uh, and we have, uh, the, the organization has been uh, um, bringing together all, uh, all member states to move the response in the most coordinated way. Unfortunately, uh, WHO doesn't have uh, uh, enforcement uh, uh, capacity. And so member states have uh, sometimes uh, gone uh, uh, without following the, the, the advice that was provided by the World Health Organization. I think this treaty provides the opportunity to uh, bring together all nations uh, mm -hmm. around uh, what will be the next steps needed in case of, of a next emergency. And so it will take time to get uh, this treaty or convention in place, but it will strengthen, certainly WHO, but will strengthen the capacity of countries to prevent, prepare, mm -hmm. and respond better to future threats. Indeed, Dr. Emanuele Copabianco, thank you so much for joining us here on the News Hour. We appreciate it. <laughs>